the dung beetle, strongest insect in the world. Do you even lift? Because there's a little critter out there making massive gains while you're busy watching this video. Of course, we're talking about the incredible dung beetle, the strongest animal in the world, at least pound for pound. So what's the story with these little guys? How do they do it? And could we learn a thing or two for our next gym session? Stay tuned and find out. Power Poop Pusher Dung beetle actually refers to one of the many thousands of beetles classified under the Scarabaeoidae superfamily and Geotrupidae family. There are two subfamilies as well, with Scarabaeoidae being home of the true dung beetles. Apart from taxonomic classification, a dung beetle is identifiable by its love for eating feces. That's right, these critters love poop, and they can't get enough of the stuff. Given such diversity, the various true and false dung beetle species have different approaches to life and poop. Dung beetles are found on all major continents except Antarctica. They live in a wide range of habitats, including forests, grass plains, swamps, and deserts. They don't like extreme cold, though, and they avoid overly dry areas. These bugs live deep in the wild or right under our noses. Basically, they live anywhere good poop and dung can be found and uh, harvested. So what kind of dung do they like? Well, different kinds. Obviously, not all poop is created equally, and the beetles tend to have their preferences based on the particular species, environment, and so on. However, they generally go for dung from herbivores or omnivores. Most species favor omnivore dung because of its diverse nutritional value. Dung covers most of a dung beetle's nutritional and hydration needs, so they rarely need to go after other food sources. Of course, several species and groups of dung beetles eat decayed plant matter, fungi, and a few others are carnivorous and predatory. Predatory dung beetles like Canthon virens and Deltachillum valgum prey on winged insects and arthropods, respectively. A lot of others are pretty omnivorous themselves, eating anything from other beetles to anything you drop at the dinner table. Dung beetles, or scarabs, have long been part of human life and culture since, well, forever. The Egyptians, in particular, held scarabs in both great and infamous regard. It was part of language, religion, economics, and of course politics. The beetles' dung-rolling ritual was likened to the movement of the sun across the sky during the day, as well as the dawn of new beginnings and new life. Various deities were attached to the scarabs, and countless religious and institutional artifacts and relics bear a beetle in one shape or another. In language, scarabs were a big part of hieroglyphics and their associated linguistics. Here, they also represent transition, transformation, and a bunch of other things. In modern language, you can find a dung beetle emoji on your phone, and it is the perfect companion for the poop emoji. But don't you think for one second that dung beetles and their influence are restricted to the realms of theory? Not one bit. They have tremendous practical benefits, too. Farmers are their number one fans, for the most part, because of how they can turn over manure and soil, facilitating even watering and chemical application. Governments and landowners benefit from their incredible soil rehabilitation skills, and they've shown they can transform relatively barren land into feasible agricultural hubs. South Africa is one of the world's leaders in dung beetle relations, and the bugs have near diplomatic immunity in that country. Dung beetles have right-of-way on South African roads, and even huge semi-trucks, SUVs, and presidential motorcades have to stop for them or face serious prosecution. Luckily, anyone in a hurry is more than welcome to help the little guys in their balls of poop get across safely. Naturally, by shifting balls of plant-based poop, dung beetles do a lot of seed dispersing, which is basically spreading seeds around. Forestries and forest commissions around the world love beetles for this because they rejuvenate a lot of the natural flora by planting seeds all over. This, in turn, supports healthier populations of the fauna that eat the plants and poop for the beetles. Ranchers love them because they can support many different crop side hustles and get rid of potentially toxic waste from animal pens and enclosures. The nasty dung attracts flies, including the hazardous tsetse fly, which causes the potentially fatal sleeping sickness. In America, the numbers don't lie. 
the Dung Beetle Poop Removal Service saves farmers an annual $400 million. That's in waste removal costs and disease loss avoided. Globally? Who knows? Billions at least. More and more countries continue to invest in dung beetles to generate these passive savings. Australia is the world's number one importer of beetles. The folks down under have succeeded with hardy species from Europe and South Africa, which have helped boost soil fertility for cattle pastures and help neighborhoods stay relatively dog poop free. An indirect benefit of this has been the reduction of disease-causing bushflies by an unbelievable 90%. In neighboring New Zealand, research has shown that dung beetle introduction could play a big role in reducing the emission of greenhouse gases like nitrous oxide. Of course, there are other unwanted indirect issues to consider before introducing dung beetles. After all, they can just as likely be vectors for disease themselves by carrying bacteria and parasites from wild animals to vulnerable domestic livestock. So you better know where you're sourcing your beetles, or you might kickstart a whole series of problems. In modern science, the beetles were poorly understood until the world benefited from the scrutiny and diligence of Jean-Henri Fabre in the late 1800s. He kickstarted the proper analysis and understanding of dung beetle behavior, which in turn inspired Yves Combefort and Ilka Hansky to research and come up with their famous dung beetle classification. According to the latter scientists, there are three categories of dung beetles. The first category is the roller. Roller beetles do just that, roll balls of dung. There are two main reasons for this, food storage and brood balls. For food storage, the beetle rolls the dung to a safe spot and buries it for immediate or later consumption. Brood balls are a much more long-term reason. Male and female beetles that link up during breeding seasons scout and find suitable dung for their brood. Once the pair is satisfied with their choice, the male, sometimes with the female's help, rolls the ball of dung to a safe spot with soft soil. The pair then buries the dung and themselves underground, where they have a little romantic time to themselves. Eventually, the female lays a bunch of eggs inside the dung brood ball, a form of pre-birth mass provision. For the baby beetles, it's kind of like being born in a huge restaurant with tables stacked with food. In some species, one or both parents stick around to guard the brood ball site. The larvae live in and eat the dung ball until they metamorphosize into pupa and later fully-fledged dung beetles. The second dung beetle category is the tunnelers. Again, you get what it says on the box. Tunnelers tunnel their way into the ground and take their dung balls with them. The major difference between tunnelers and rollers is that tunnelers tend to bury dung where they find it and only roll it for the sake of making it more manageable. The last category is the dwellers. These little guys don't even bother to dig and simply move into some tasty dung and live there for as long as they need to. Most beetles rely on a keen sense of smell to find distant poop, while a few others simply track and tag alongside animals that will inevitably drop fresh, steamy piles of juicy nutrition. As you can imagine, dung is as good as gold in the dung beetle kingdom. And just like gold, it attracts thieves. Dung beetles are notorious for attempting to steal each other's dung balls, and the miniature clashes can be quite epic. Dung beetles can battle for hours on end for the right to roll, and anything can happen. In particularly scarce environments, the stakes on these fights may be life or death. That's why a clever dung beetle who arrives early to a poop site knows to roll up and roll out ASAP before rivals sniff him or her out. Luckily, it's not always tough times for these poop lovers. Many times, they luck into livestock yards or herds of hippos or something. In Africa and Southeast Asia, elephant dung is the ultimate prize. A single adult elephant can produce a pile of dung that could host a million beetle weddings and broodings. On such occasions, the beetles rock and roll and dig and store until their little heart's content. Different species have different approaches to rolling, but every one of them has devised an efficient way of moving dung from point A to point B. Of course, this efficiency is heavily supported by the dung beetle's incredible strength. These insects can achieve superhero levels of power, manipulating objects several times their own weight. One species, the taurus, or bull-headed scarab, is arguably the animal kingdom's pound-for-pound -pound champion. 
these dung beetles can drag objects well over 1,000 times their body weight. In human terms, this is pretty much similar to pulling the aforementioned motorcade by yourself. Sheer power is backed up by crazy endurance, too. Taurus beetles are known to haul and hide dung balls that weigh over 200 times their weight in a single night. Another interesting thing about dung beetles is their unique nighttime navigation. The African Scarabaeus satyrus dung beetle gets its bearings by observing the stars of the Milky Way. Another species, Scarabaeus ambicianus, observes moonlight polarization patterns to orient itself. Scientists are still trying to figure out the ones and zeros of these unique ways of navigating. Dung beetles' love for dirty work also makes them handy companions in ecological research. They are useful for gauging how various natural and man-made phenomena impact ecosystem functions. In other words, how do things like drought, forest fires, deforestation, or new chemicals impact beetles and their poop industry? Clearly, dung beetles have a strong niche, a strong set of skills, as well as the literal strength of an ultimate survivor. For millions of years, dung beetles have been nature's quietly efficient waste management system, and the importance of their role is set to keep growing and growing. Fortunately for nature, the little bugs have more than enough strength to bear the extra load.